Hello everyone. Um, thanks, thanks for joining this video. Uh, it's been a while since I've been doing one of those, uh, so sorry about that. Uh, but today I'm going to be explaining a little bit uh, what is the Datadog Kubernetes Admission Controller. And the reason why I'm doing this video now, uh, the Admission Controller uh, for Datadog has been around for quite a few months. Uh, but uh, one of the most interesting features from the, for the admission controller was just released, which is library injection. And some people are confused about how all of this works. So I thought it would be interesting to, to explain it with a practical example, as we usually do. Let's uh, kick this off. Um, so this is a blog post. Um, as you can see, it was published on January 30th, um, explaining why library injection and what it does for you. But before uh, going into library injection in particular, we're going to explain a little bit the admission controller in data, what it is. Um, and I think the first thing to, to explain would be to understand what are admission controllers in Kubernetes, if you don't know um, already. So when you make a request to the Kubernetes API, it goes through a set of phases. It first goes through authentication. Is this authenticated or not? Um, in most, I would say, in all of the Kubernetes cluster uh, requests needs to be authenticated. Once it's been authenticated, it goes to authorization, which is basically RBAC. And an RBAC is able to, to answer um, the type of, of questions of, can this particular user for this particular object, can this create or update this particular object on a, on a particular namespace. So this is more or less RBAC. But then it goes through a third phase, which is our mission controllers. And admission controllers are uh, like small pieces of software that can either further validate the request, um, the validate type, or they can even change the request. So before actually going to the server, they can change um, the request. And there are a lot of admission controllers in Kubernetes. So you can see that um, if you go to this page on the Kubernetes um, documentation, you can see that there are um, many, always admit, always deny, always pull images. And uh, basically the way you activate or deactivate these admission controllers is by command line arguments of the Kubernetes API. Uh, but all of this long list, there are a couple of them uh, there are quite special. These are mutating admission webhook and uh, the equivalent, which is the validate admission webhook. And these are special because they allow external software to the Kubernetes API server to hook into that phase of the API request. Uh, and this is exactly what the admission controller uh, for Datadog does. So it's a mutating admission webhook and it's able to alter your request um, and, and make some modification to your resource, the resource that you're creating or updating in order to improve the observability of, of that object. So let's let's see this with, with an example. Um, just so you know, uh, this example is going to, everything that you need to replicate what I'm doing, it's on this repo. I'm going to put a link uh, on, on the video as well. Uh, so if, if you want to replicate, you only need uh, a Datadog account um, that you can use a trial for and a, a kind cluster. I can even give you how to set that up and, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's see what it is all about. Um, so this is again the same repo. Um, I've already done some things like I already created uh, the cluster itself with kind. So if I get uh, get nodes, you can see that there is a normal kind cluster. And I also have already Datadog up and running. So I'm putting the instructions there as well if you want to do the same, but this is already running. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is see uh, the, ba the basic admission controller uh, feature. So the ones that were already there before the library injection um, and what it does. So if we go to, um, to here, we can see that we have a set of, of objects that we are going to create. And 
Uh, this is basically an application that we are going to be showing in, in a second. So in order to, to provide traffic and um, for the ones uh, that are uh, Python ones, because this is what we are going to be showing uh, Python, you can do library injection also with Java and JavaScript and others to come, but we are going to see Python today. So you can see that uh, this is just a normal deployment in Kubernetes uh, with a set of M variables. Um, I've using an image that I assure you is not instrumented yet. And in order to tell the Datadog admission controller that I want wanted to mutate my resource, so it's completely opt-in, um, I've added this, uh, this label to my object, basically saying, please change that. So this is more or less how it looks like. So the first thing we are going to do is to um, apply all those objects. Um, and the, this has created a set of, of um, pods and services. Uh, it's going to take a little bit uh, to run. And one of the things that uh, is going to happen is that those objects are going to be uh, modified. Uh, so they they are going to be stopped by the mutating admission controller in, in Datadog and they are going to be modified. So if we check, for example, this one, the ads one, uh, and uh, we check its YAML file um, for the object that is already created, not the one that we created it, it has extra stuff. So it has this DD entity ID, which is going to, to help uh, with docs.d uh, metrics. It's going to have this reference to the agent, which is needed uh, in order to send, for example, tracing information and logs. And this is usually what, what used to happen is that you needed to add this by yourself. And that basically would clutter your, your resources. Um, this way, it's it's added um, at a running level instead of, of your uh, initial resource. Uh, so you can see it has a set of things. Also, it, it added some environmental variables. So for the DM, DD version, and, and DD service as well. Uh, so all of this is added for you. This is good, um, but uh, if we go to, to Datadog right now, uh, you can see that uh, all these new pods are here. And if you see the YAML, as I said, uh, you can see the one that was already modified. So that's good. Uh, the first basic injection uh, worked, uh, the admission controller, sorry. But if we go to uh, APM and traces, uh, we can see that we only have traces for the front end. And the reason why we only have traces for the front end is that it's the only service that we have that it's pre-instrumented. And the reason why it's pre-instrumented that one is because um, it's a Ruby application, the front end, and, and there is no um, auto injection of, of tracing libraries yet for Ruby. Um, but for the Python ones, we don't have any information here. So usually what we need to do is to go change our application and on instrument our application or use any auto instrumentation uh, tool for it. But the animation controller can do all of that for us. Uh, and we are going to, to check how that works by uh, applying this second version that um, I'm going to show, uh, you can see that the only thing that we change is ads and discounts, the rest it's, it's more or less the same. But I'm going to check uh, the only difference between one or the other. So what you need to do in order to, for the admission controller to inject the tracing library for you. So let's check the ads one. Uh, you can see that we already have the same thing. We are telling the admission controller, please mutate this resource. But then we added another thing. We added an annotation uh, is specifying what library injection do we want to inject to this particular object. 
So let's see what happened with that. Uh, so if we go back to uh, to to um, Kubernetes objects and pods, and we check the new uh, ads uh, that we have created, you will see that the, there are a lot more of modifications uh, that we can see. So aside from the ones that we already had, like uh, this uh, TD version, service, etc., agent host, etc., we have um, one container extra, one extra container, which is an init container. And this init container, um, it's going to initialize that um, injection. So basically what it does is to copy this file into uh, Datadog lib. Uh, which is a volume mount that has also been created. So if we go to volumes, um, we can see that uh, we have the, the volume mounts for, um, for Datadog lib. And this is the volume that it uh, has to be here. is this one, uh, this Datadog auto instrumentation. So basically it creates a volume and a volume mount uh, that is going to put the library in. So let's check uh, that pod. Uh, we can check that pod uh, and see how this works. This is a specific now to Python. So what is doing with Python? Uh, so if we sec into that pod, we can see that um, we have this volume mount that we were talking about. This was created by the, um, the information was created by init container. And we have this site customize.py. Let's check what this have. And you can see that the only thing that it does um, is to install the library. So it goes pip install dd trace. So that's the dd trace is the uh, Python, um, Python uh, library to do instrumentation in Python. So that's basically what it does. And then um, it fixes Python up path to point to that one. And one of the reasons why it needs to change the Python path is because another thing that it does on, on here if I find it, is that uh, it modifies the, on the init container, the Python path to that lib. So it does uh, basically enforces um, enforces uh, loading that model, that Python model. Once that is going to happen, that's the only thing that it does. Basically, it does uh, DHS bootstrap site customize. And this is the same thing that um, DD run, which is the old way of doing auto instrumentation, uh, you had to do. But in this case, everything is, is done for you. So what can we say here now? So we can see that uh, now we not only see uh, the, the traces for, for the front end, but also for ads and uh, for discounts, and let's let's check a full trace because this was only the the setting up of the trace. Uh, let's check the application here. By doing a port forward, for example, and let's open the app. So we can get a full end-to-end -end trace, including the front end all the way uh, to the to the ads and, and discounts. The first time the application is to load, basically that's the the bootstrap of the database, and that's why it's taking a little bit longer to to load. Um, the following times are going to be a lot faster. Let 
let's check the in the meantime the traces that are coming in so you can see that it's already coming in all these traces and this is a full end-to-end -end trace um, coming directly from from the front end it took a while but now we can refresh and it will take uh, a lot uh, a lot less so we we will be able to see all those all those traces coming in so this is it. Um, I hope you understood a little bit how the admission controller uh, in Datadog works and how it can help you inject those, those tracing libraries. Again, uh, all this example uh, is available here so you can reproduce and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.